here today as we introduce our 10th women's basketball coach in school history, Katrina Merriweather. We will start off today with an introduction and a statement from our athletic director, John Cunningham. He will then present a jersey to Coach Merriweather, and she will then take photos with the jersey and some of our uh, VIPs here. And then after that, Coach will give her opening statement, and then we will open up to questions. For any media here that would like a quick one-on-one -on -one with Coach or John Cunningham or Maggie McKinley, who ran the search, we can do that right after. Just wave me down, we'll do it right over here. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our Director of Athletics, John Cunningham. figured out. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is a, an exciting day for the Bearcats. Today, we are bringing home one of our own, a Bearcat. To, yes. <laughs> to lead our women's basketball program at an absolutely pivotal time. And I am so excited to introduce Coach Merriweather. But first, let me say thank you to a few people that assisted during this process. Senior staff members John Daniel, Brad Pike, and a very special thank you to Maggie McKinley, who was instrumental in this search process. I want to thank President Pinto, the UC Board of Trustees for their continued support, helping us build a winning culture in athletics. I also want to commend and thank our young women on the women's basketball team. They demonstrated great leadership and steadiness throughout this transitional time. When we accepted a bid to the Big 12 Conference on September 12, 2021, we set out an ambitious goal to be day one ready. To me, that always meant that we needed to make changes necessary to create a first class experience for our student athletes. Our women's basketball program needed to be more competitive. It needed a new direction. It needed someone to lead this program who could pull together the power of this Cincinnati community, its love for basketball, and its full support of Bearcat student athletes. We were looking for someone to recruit at a Big 12 level and who demonstrated full care and concern for our student athletes. I think I can speak for my colleagues on the search committee. Sometimes a search for a leader becomes very clear. When you know, you know. Coach Merriweather was meant to be the head women's basketball coach at the University of Cincinnati. She is the right fit at the exact right time for the Bearcats. She has realized the power of college athletics in her life as a Bearcat. She has realized the impact of a community of supporters, Bearcats fans, and she has felt the impact a coach can have on a young person's life. Coach Lori Pearl's impact on her life. Thank you. And of course, she has experienced and continues the experience the love and lifelong support of teammates. You can see the presence of some of her teammates here today. In short, I was struck by her humility, her vision for this program, her love for the University of Cincinnati, and her deep appreciation for the experience that it provided to her. Once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat, welcome home, Coach Merriweather.
to admit, I didn't know you were this tall on the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I'm much more of an off the cuff type of person. Um, planning speeches has never been my strong suit, only speaking from my heart and, and what I feel in these moments. I am incredibly thankful to you, John and Maggie, President Pinto, for believing in me enough to give me this opportunity. Uh, my family, thank you so much for being here. My mom, dad, I've got grandparents. Um, obviously, my sister has a dual role. Um, cousins, just thank you, my niece and nephew. Thank you all for being here, it means a lot. Um, 25 years ago, who knew when, when Lori Pirtle called that I would be standing right here right now? My experience here was not only some of the best years of my life, but it's where I learned and where I became an adult and a woman, and I was taught how to survive in this world. And when Mark Lewis was on the staff, who then left for Washington, and Mike Bradbury took over, and Don Hoosier, these people, Esther McMillan, they embraced me and taught me things that were not about basketball. They were about life. And I think that that's the most incredible gift that any coach can give to their players. And I thank you for what you did for me, not just on the floor, but obviously as people and as a person. Uh, my teammates that are here, um, hey y'all. <laughs> Um, I, I think when Lori taught us that teammates are forever, this is what she meant. That no matter what we went through and no matter what was going on in our lives, that there would be something that connected us forever. And it doesn't matter where I've coached, it doesn't matter what I've been through, we have been there for each other the entire time. And to have you here means everything. Thank you. Um, what we have is, is a goal to continue to build. I always believe that I stand on the shoulders of other people. Um, the coaches that have coached here, uh, the players who have played here that were my teammates or not my teammates, um, they've always been so gracious. They've always invited us back. They've always encouraged us to be a part. So when you say things like once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat, I have never felt not a part of this program, never. And whether it was, again, coming back for homecoming and meeting up with my sorority sisters and or meeting professors that, again, helped me be a double major here while being a student athlete, uh, that did everything they could to allow me in my fifth year when Lori asked me if I wanted to be a graduate assistant. And I had people who did all they could to make sure that I could still do my, my field experience in education so that I was allowed to graduate with my English degree as well as my secondary education degree. These are the people that are the heartbeat of this place. And that is why I wanted to come back. And yes, John has done a tremendous job in making sure that we are ready to go into the Big 12 and all things that are prepared, but what he's also done a great job of is surrounding himself with people who care about these student athletes. And it's the most important thing to me and it always will be and that was because I was poured into. And so it is my job, it's my responsibility to continue to pour into young people. And I am so incredibly thankful for how I've been embraced by these young women that I met first time on a Zoom, although I had seen them play a few times. And then for them to show up yesterday and kept it a secret too, because we were scheduled to talk later on that evening, uh, meant everything. Thank you for showing up already for me and I appreciate that. Um, you'll see my staff and my family. Um, my staff is my family. And I know there'll be a lot of questions about what the future looks like, but at the end of the day, thank you all for always being here to support me. No matter what decisions I've made professionally that obviously impact and affect you, you have never wavered, you have never not been supportive, and there's no way that I could have accomplished everything that I have without you. And everything that I am is what we are and that is what we have been taught in Butu. I am who I am because of who we all are. And that is why I'm still standing here in love with this place. It's because there are people that continue to show and pour into not just me, but just the people that I care about and the people that are most important. So we're gonna work really hard, y'all. 
We really are. We're going to do everything that we can to compete, and we're going to grow, and we're going to develop these young people, and we're going to do everything we can to compete for championships because it's the only thing that I know how to do. And I'm going to share one story really quickly that people probably wouldn't imagine was ever part of my story. After freshman year, and I think every year, and I've continued to do this, Lori, since I've been a coach, you have a conversation and you recap the year. And I felt that I was pretty good. I felt <laughs> that my grades were really good. And I was a, had high character and I was a really, really good player. I had no idea that my scholarship was on the line when I went into that meeting. And the reason my scholarship was on that line, Lori told me, you just aren't doing what I know you're capable of doing. And it was the first time that I was smacked in the face that doing just enough is not good enough. And so excellence is always the standard. To always do what you're capable of doing, not just what you can get away with doing. And I, again, had a completely different perspective, but Lori, that conversation changed the entire trajectory of how I view life. And I appreciate that lesson more than anything. So that when we go into, whether it is a game, or we're doing community service, or we're in the classroom having conversations about what we're doing academically, excellence is the standard. And you set that for me and every single person that you coached. And I appreciate that beyond words. So everyone that played a part, I won't go through the same thank yous. Just thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in, in what we've done and believing that we're going to get this place where everyone is extremely proud and we are going to represent. And it is so nice to hear that the band, cheer, dance, our spirit squads are still excellent. And thank you all for being here too. I really appreciate that. So again, it's great to be home. And I just, I'm overwhelmed with excitement and gratitude. Thank you very, very much. We'll open this for uh, questions from the media. Please raise your hand, and someone with a microphone will uh, hand it to you. Joe? Hi, Katrina. Uh, what did you learn from your quick turnaround at Memphis that you can apply here to getting a quick turnaround here at Cincinnati? That the most important thing is the buy-in from our student athletes. When we walked into uh, that job, I feel like there were student athletes that were looking for something. And the conversation that we had right away was, you can trust that I am who I am, and I can trust that you want to be the best that you can be, and we can skip a lot of steps, and we can get right to learning each other and learning some basketball. And when they decided that that's what they wanted to do, that is what allowed us to have an effective turnaround, um, was simply just believing. And so that's the same thing that I expect to happen here. What were your first thoughts when you got the call, and uh, how was your ball handling compared to Coach Pirtle? Well, we all know she is the guru of ball handling. Um, I remember the first time that I saw her throw the ball up in the air and bite an apple. And I was like, and then, who does that? Um, definitely not me. Um, but I will say that the development that I had under Dawn was huge. I was very much a, a tweener, like a 3-4, and played a lot of four in high school, which you look at these teams now, they're all six feet tall, and I'm all of 5'8", no matter what any media guy says. Um, <laughs> and so not as good of a ball handler, but I know I was greatly improved, for sure. And it was just simply because of the development and the investment that was put into me and all of us. For people who haven't seen your teams play with you as a head coach, how would you describe the way your teams play? Yeah, we always talk about defending and rebounding. It's the one thing that, that travels. Um, my staff has put together some information that I, I don't really recall, but something to the semblance of every team that we've had has been in the top 15 uh, rebounding-wise in the country. Uh, it's something that we work on. And in my mind, there are things that you marry, things you engage, and things that you date. 
and, and we marry rebounding. Um, so for us, it, it's going to be things that we can carry at home and then carry them on the road. Um, so that's what you're gonna see, a team that works really hard, that's fundamental and disciplined, um, that I hate to say plays the game the right way because I think there are, are multiple ways to play it, but the way that we believe that it should be. And it, it's going to be playing really hard. I think when people come watch us play, they're gonna say, man, no, like they play really, really hard. Um, and, and that's that's the best thing for me to hear is that we love watching your team and the effort that they leave out there on the floor. Congratulations. Hi, Amber. So as part of the media and with social media, essentially all of us in this room are part of the media. What message can we support of yours on our personal pages or when we're in the community or when we're talking to future Bearcats? What is the message that we can help spread for you? We are in a, a space where there's all sorts of growth happening in athletics, and particularly in our sport, the more the visibility of the WNBA. Um, we all know about NIL and those sorts of things. We are going to want people in our program that want to be Bearcats. It's the single most important thing. We want you to want to be here, to believe in what we're doing, uh, that we're going to invest far beyond, again, the, the floor, that we're going to do everything we can. One of the things that we say in recruiting a lot is you're going to hand us a young lady, we're going to hand you back a young woman. And it's really important that through that journey with us that when they graduate, when these young people graduate, that they'll go off and they'll do amazing things get in the community. So simply, we need to find people and or they need to find us because I believe in reciprocity in recruiting and that they want to be Bearcats. It's the single most important thing. When you're, oh, sorry. When, when you're first year, Katrina, is also meshing with the first year of this university going into the Big 12, how do you measure success for, from a team that obviously needed a coaching change, needed a new voice, to now going to a new conference? How do you measure success year one as the head coach of UC's women's basketball? Um, honestly, despite the social media presence and, and the attention that the program and all athletics receives internally, because we're the only ones that are going to be aware of our journey. We're going to be the only ones that know the small victories and the improvements. And what we will always do is set small goals so that we can celebrate victories. And we'll see how that equates to wins and losses. But it's really important that we develop a mentality, that we, that we have an identity. And, and to me, that is more important than wins or losses, especially in the beginning. It's important that we're on the same page. So of course we're going to compete. Of course we're going to go into every game prepared with a plan, and we're going to do our very best to execute the plan. And, and I think, similar to the last position that I took, I think that people are underestimating the talent that's on this team and what we're going to be able to do. And uh, that's okay because this, that's for us to evaluate and for us to, to build on. And um, that's what our plan is, is to get your, make sure we're on the same page, smell, celebrate the small victories, and again, eventually, we'll get exactly what we work for. Olivia and Justin. Coach, you mentioned a special moment yesterday, I believe, meeting with the team. Could you elaborate on that, and what was your message to them? What stood out to you with your first encounter with them? Well, that they are, they're ready to go. Uh, you just saw them get up and leave. Uh, they're going to weights, you know, so as much as it was important to have them here, they're gonna go do what they're responsible for doing, which is getting ready. Um, we talked a lot about all the things that I think are, are important as you get to develop relationships. So we talked about their family, everything from their birth order to their zodiac signs, what they wanna major in and what they're gonna do afterwards. Um, I maintain that when people know that you're invested in them, they turn around and they'll do anything, they'll run through a wall for you. Um, and I know that because that's who I play for, is, is someone who could relate, someone who built those relationships, and then you have two people that are working really hard for the same goal. Justin. Coach, you mentioned NIL briefly. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, NIL and the transfer portal, curious what your philosophy is on, on both of those in terms of recruiting and team building. Yeah, you know, it's so new um, that I think that it matters to sit down and have a lot of conversations about what it looks like. Um, and again, we've had those conversations and we're going to use NIL in the best way that suits our young folks. And, and I think that there's a responsibility there for them 
in their branding, and I think there are plenty of people here that are in place to have those conversations. Um, we, however, want people that want to be Bearcats. And that, again, is the, the single most important thing. Uh, transfer portal can be tricky. Um, what we have used it for in the past year is kids that did not pick us the first time, the relationship is already built and they come back. Um, I'm not interested in doing anything so quick that the culture of the program is sacrificed. I think that it is a process and we're going to go through that process in that journey. Now, uh, there's nothing about Cincinnati, I chose it, so it's hard for me to, to comprehend how someone else could not choose it. Um, but uh, what we'll do is, is we'll muddy through that the best way as possible. And the most important thing is to get in, in the gym with this current roster and see what this team needs. We're not going out and going to grab the best players, quote unquote, that we can get. It's about creating a team and building a program, not trying to win as quick as possible so that you have these ebbs and flows and, and inconsistent performances and ups and downs. I believe that championship programs are built with four-year players. You mentioned Coach Pirtle a couple of times, and John mentioned her as well. What was it about playing for her that made you want to pursue that? When did that decision happen for you? College coaching, you mean? Oh, yes. Um, well, Maggie brought up that in the media guide, I think it was my sophomore year, that future plans were to be a college coach. Um, I recall wanting to be the first journalist in the NBA locker room. Um, but apparently, that's not what I felt that day. Uh, so, <laughs> typical teenager. So I probably wanted to do several different things. Um, but when the impact that Lori and the staff had on me, it was just to carry over also from what I got from my dad, what I got from my high school coach, and it was literally, you can build people up you can have people believing that they can accomplish things that they had no idea that they could accomplish. You know, we had some, I had some great teammates, and what I've always been really good at is picking really good situations. Not one year was I the best player on the team here. Not one year. But I did believe when I came to practice and I looked at that team, and then I had Tammy, who was on my AAU team, we said, we can go there, we can win. And that group of seniors and leaders are why I wanted to come to Cincinnati, because they had called themselves the basement group. And they were the ones that were bringing Cincinnati women's basketball to where it became by the time that they left and what we were able to take over and continue doing. So it was everything. It was the, it was the environment. It was the, the kids that the staff recruited. It was the type of people that we were. Uh, it, it was not just one thing. Uh, it was just the simple belief, and people would argue, we beat people that we shouldn't have. Like when you walk in behind Lori Pardo into a conference tournament, you believe you're going to win that whole thing. And we walked with our head up and our shoulders back, and it didn't matter if we were the best team or not, we always believed that we could compete and beat anyone that we played against. And that is exactly what the goal is going to be here and moving forward. John, you have some locals on your roster now. Uh <laughs> Well, I think that Ohio has always had a lot of talent. Ohio also has 13 Division I schools. So there are a lot of options for kids in Ohio. We're going to work to take care of home. We're gonna do everything we can to recruit here locally. Uh, but we'll, we'll override everything. We are not going to beg people to come here. We're not gonna beg people to believe. The people who want to work hard, be proud of what is across their chest are the people that are going to be on this team. And we are very confident that there will be enough talented players that want to do that in order for us to compete. But absolutely, the goal is to, to be close to home. I just came home. I know the power of that. I know the importance of that. But at the end of the day, what we're going to do is have people who want to have Bearcats in Cincinnati across their chest. I 
have to be honest, I talked to very few people uh, throughout this process. Um, we were still playing, first of all, um, and out of respect to the situation, which I can greatly appreciate the way that it was handled and the patience that was exhibited as we, our season had con was continuing at our last place. Um, I called Lori to ask how she felt about it. I didn't call her to tell her that I was accepting the job. Um, in her voice, I could hear that she thought it was the right thing to do. So more than anything that she said, I could feel through the phone um, that this was the time and that this was the place and exactly where I needed to be. So what everyone has consistently done, everyone has supported me. Whatever you wanna do, we're right here with you. We'll help you, we'll do whatever you need. And that's what it feels like to come home. Any other questions for coach? One more right here in the front. How excited am I? Yeah, it's, um, it's so surreal. Um, every, like listening again to the band, um, walking across in the Bearcat, being present, seeing faces, <laughs> seeing faces um, that I remember. You know, and seeing the new faces of the people that believe and love this place, I am overwhelmingly excited. Um, but I'm also determined to get to work and make sure that we represent the way that we are capable of and that we need to. Um, so I'm not an overly excitable person um, in regards to, I talked to the team and they asked me if I yell. And I said, yeah, I can't. Um, I got this voice box thing where yelling sounds like a screeching cat and it's not very authoritative, and um, they would pretty much just laugh at me. So you won't see me jumping up and down a whole lot, but um, I think I'm still in this moment and, and paying attention to, like I'm watching my teammates play up here on, on this video in our shorts that go below our knees. <laughs> and we knew we were so cool back then, and we so were not uh, in retrospect. but. Um, there are no words for the excitement that I feel and how, and my, again, my gratitude for these people. And, and when I was talking to Maggie through this process, and again, the respect that you exhibited to me for me in, in during this process, we know everything that this place can be. We were here 25 years ago together. And, and it's a very rare opportunity to come back to your alma mater and have an opportunity to lead a program. So there are no words to express that opportunity or how grateful I am to everybody. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you.